Hey Fiberista, so I'm back uh, with another demo from my beach trip. Now this is the trip that I took with my girlfriend where I brought my blending board and my spinning wheel and a bunch of fiber and made a bunch of yarn. So here I am at my blending board and I'm going to make a gigantic roll log uh, to spin some art yarn with. And what I'm doing here is putting some locks on first. Now I like to have the locks to pop out and I'm, I'm making this with weaving in mind. So I want the locks to pop out of my fabric. Um, so I want to maintain this lock structure. So but to do this, I put that those locks on first. And I want them, I'm going to press them deep into the board with my brush and what that's going to do is that's going to protect that lock structure from being broken up by the brush and by my hand cards as I add other fibers to it and this is also going to put those locks on the top of my roll log which is where I like them to be I like to have them visible so when I come across them as I'm spinning I can manipulate them so here I'm adding some blue farm wool um, to the mix as well. Um, not too much, just a little bit. I want just a little pop of blue. This yarn's going to primarily be a white yarn with pops of color and texture. Anyway, I'm digging around. I'm going to pull out some, I think this is either milk silk or soy silk. I'm not sure which. And as well as some Angelina. Got to have a lot of sparkle in this yarn. Um, I'm going to use my brush to put that into the teeth because it, since it's such a fine fiber I don't really need to use my hand cards to break it up. I'm going to add some more farm wool. I think I'm adding some more farm wool. I'm digging around. Yes. Nope. I'm adding some banana silk. This is, uh, I get this from the some mills in India. They use this fiber to make saris with. I'm adding some more farm wool. Um, and I'm going to let this farm will be a little more textural. I'm going to let the crimp show a little bit. So I'm not going to use my hand cards. I'm just going to use my brush to push it into the teeth as lumpy as it can be. Um, but I do see some spaces. So I want to add some more farm wool. I'm going to use uh, something that's a little smoother. I think this is a Rambouillet or a Corydel. I think both of those are either Rambouillet or Corydel. And I'm adding this on top of the lumpy stuff. And I'm going to go back with my hand cards and brush this out. Now this is going to make that fiber a little smoother and it'll contrast against the lumps of that other farm wool that's on the layer right below. I always pick stuff off of my hand cards and add it back uh, to the the blending board because you know the fiber is still good if it's if it has some short pieces or some lumps that's okay I'm making a textural yarn I don't want any of this fiber to go to waste And then, of course, go back over with my brush to push those fibers deep into the teeth so I can add more fiber on top. I'm going to add some, some more sari fiber. Now, this sari fiber has been run through a drum carter, so it's more has more of a texture of like a wool fiber like the farm wools. Um, but there's little bits of string in there, um, and I'm adding this to give a tweed effect to the yarn. I'm going to go back over with my hand cards to smooth it out a little bit um, and then again not wasting any of the fiber on my hand cards since I'm not looking for a super smooth yarn here. 
Um, so anything that's on my hand cards is fair game. All right, so I'm here. I'm about to pull it off the drum, uh, the blending board. I'm uh, using my my brush to pick up that fiber a little bit out of the teeth, especially those locks that I had uh, pushed way down into the teeth. Sometimes I just need to get those the bristles of the brush underneath those fibers to pull it up so I can add it, um, roll it onto the roll log. I'm stretching that fiber out a little bit so um, and what that does is that kind of that kind of helps uh, lock that roll log into place those fibers kind of stretch across the whole the whole roll log and it helps the roll log keep its shape again continuing to pick those locks from out from the teeth that are in the bottom of um, of the that stack of fibers now this yarn, I, as I mentioned before, I'm going to be using it for weaving. So I'm just going to do this one roll log. It's not going to yield a whole lot of yardage, but that's okay. Because in weaving, I don't use as much yardage. And I like to kind of paint with my yarn when I'm doing my art weaving. So so just, just a little bit of, of this art yarn is going to be just fine. You can see it got uh, a little stuck on my sticks uh, because I rolled it a little too tight against the sticks. But I managed to get it off. Anyway, so this is the yarn. This is the final yarn. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I spun this up. But this turned out to be a total of about 18 yards. Again, that's a that's a good size for, for a little accent in the art weaving when I mix it with some planer yarns. Um, which I'll probably be doing later on this month. Anyway, but check out the next video where I show you how I spin this coarse spun yarn. Alright, thanks for joining. I'll see you guys next time. Don't you